Happy Monday, gentlemen. Uh, welcome back to the show. And we're talking Roku uh, today. And this is another stock. Our theme of the day, Landon, is downgrades because we saw a bunch of them across the board, which doesn't seem to hurt the, mar the stock market at all. But what are you guys at Lightfolio seeing as far as data goes on Roku? Roku's awesome. Um, it's you know we've we've been tracking it along with a lot of the other streaming devices and uh, the reason that we're doing that is because of uh, cord cutting is be kind of at an all-time high and people are, are getting rid of cable and they're moving to these streaming devices so we've got a, a purchase intent chart of roku here that's essentially when people are buying the devices not when they're watching shows so that's a big discrepancy that you need to be aware of so these are people talking about buying roku devices um, and interestingly enough, you know, we, we put out an alert for our members in January. I think the stock was around 39. We were bullish at that point. Obviously, it's done extremely well since then. Um, now we're running into a little bit of, uh, you know, technical headwind. You've got kind of a, a top around 70. And just, of course, today, city has got that downgrade. Uh, and so it's down, I think, about 5 or 6% today. And so you know just for people who have gotten into this when we did i would say that maybe now is a, a good time to take profits off the table up 50 percent um just because of the fact that purchase intent is at all-time highs but it's also just about where it was a year ago and the stock made a huge run and so um i think that we kind of agree with the the city um downgrade a little bit uh, just based on the price of of the the stock obviously it's you can be bullish at 40 and then kind of flip to neutral around 60 or 65 which is what we're doing uh, but the reason that Roku's doing so well, and this it could be a good long-term play is because, as I mentioned, the cord cutting. And so uh, we look at different trends throughout the, the consumer space, and people are getting rid of cable to a high degree. And when we look at all the different um, companies that have uh, streaming devices, what you'll notice is over the last year and a half or two years, um, Roku is the only one of these four, Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, TV and Chromecast that have been uptrending consistently um, over that period of time. People talking about getting onto that platform. And so Roku's going against some big hitters here. I mean, you're talking about Amazon, Apple, and Google. Those That's some serious competition. And to not only be holding their own, but to be the only one that's going up during that time is a very positive sign for the company long term. The problem is that it's possible that maybe over you know the next five years or so, only one of these is the dominant player. If that's a, the scenario, then the, the success case for Roku is sort of a binary event. It either is the winner or it's not. Um, I think it's definitely possible that more than one could be a winner, but um, I think that it's, the space is just so juicy that others are gonna get into it. Apple TV's you know, making a big play now. Uh, that's where the source of the downgrade was from. So um, it's a lot of interesting information, but I think the key is that Roku is doing really well competing against these so far. We'll see what happens when the new Apple TV Plus comes out. Right All now, right. Roku is doing great, but it may be a little overpriced. All right, Landon, the, the billion dollar question for Roku is this. Can people leave cable, take Roku, and, and basically not miss a beat? Right? People that are going to make this shift, they want to know that, wait, I don't get anything. I, I can't watch the, the game, you know, right. the, the big game on. Is, is that, has that bridge been crossed yet? I think with Hulu, it has. I think that, you know, Hulu's being on Roku, I think that's part of it. But you're right, you've got to be able to get, um, I think a lot of the times it's live sports that right. are the big factor for people. And sometimes it's the local channels, you know, the three or four local channels that people want to get their evening or morning news or whatever it may be. Uh, so I think that is very key. Hulu's got that, I believe, and that's on Roku devices, so you can get that angle. Um, but it's not just as easy as you would just say, you know, plug in your Roku and, okay, here's your local channels. You live in Chicago, here's your local stuff. It's not that simple yet. I think that's a great point, and whoever wins this may be the one that figures that out first. Yeah, I like the aggregation that they have. And I don't want to miss my soccer matches on the weekends and the mornings either. So not switching to Roku just yet. But for more on social media, let's bring in TD Ameritrade Network's own Jenny Horn. Welcome to the show, Jen. Thanks, Hi, guys. Jen. Hi. <laughs> Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Roku, 
Now, you, you said you just purchased a TV that had Roku built into it. I did. So I really had no allegiance to Roku or any other streaming. I have a TV. question. Time out before yes. we go. What was the brand name of the TV? Or what, what was it? It wasn't a Roku TV, was Is it? it Philips? No, it, was a, it's a, it might be Philips. Yeah. Right, Phillips. W w w with I, Roku built into the TV. What I was, exactly. So I was just looking for a smart TV, and Roku had the lowest price point. There so you go. I kind of think that's a huge benefit. They offer the right price, price point, while also being a smart TV. I really had never any interest in buying a Roku device itself, but now I'm Roku loyal because I do have a Roku TV, technically. Right. And I mean, the noise on social media today, not great with so much increasing competition. It's kind of like what will happen next is what we're, really everyone's worried about. But I look at an example like Garmin. People used to use mm -hmm. Garmin's in their cars, and then everyone wondered the relevance for Garmin's once everyone had built in GPS on their phone and in their car. Right. And so what will Roku do next? What will they right. do to remain kind of on top? You don't want to just become the Garmin, because well, exactly. Garmin was huge, and all of a sudden, Everyone just written now your phone is the best. Uh, but but that being said, the partnerships that Garmin's developed, I mean, you would think that, man, why is Garmin even relevant anymore? But the partnerships and the built into the cars, they're the actual uh, facilitator of that. So they're actually doing pretty well with Yeah, but that's well a plan them. B, though, for them, right? They it's Remember, all, it used to be the little box they sold it, that sat in your day. It's all yeah. partnerships now, <laughs> yeah. and I think that's yeah. Roku's already doing that. And so. that's how you say, I think, kind of resistant to this. But right. our first tweet is from JB, who says, I think City got it wrong on Roku and the OTT. On the device side and the OS side, competition doesn't change Roku remaining on top. The increase in apps offering will increase the demand and the market. So again, what I'm kind of wondering, this person obviously has more bullish sentiment on Roku. What happens next? What do they do to stay relevant in the space that's only getting more and more crowded? Yeah, I mean, they've already got a partnership with Apple when they come out, but uh, Landon, will you see, will you guys be watching pretty closely as far as your data goes as Apple rolls out their uh, aggregator of content uh, uh, later on this fall that maybe Ro yeah, Roku takes a hit? Absolutely, yeah. So, you know, with Apple, we love to watch their keynote. We would like to watch all their big rollouts. And so this one, we're going to be watching Roku and all the others, uh, Fire TV, Chromecast, Apple TV Plus. We're going to be watching those heavily as they roll that out. Um, and Jenny makes a great point about partnerships. You know, one thing that Roku's got going for them is that they partnership with Adobe uh, for ad, higher ad revenues, higher specific targeting um, of ads. And what's interesting is they're making more money on ad revenue than they are in device sales. So. Uh, usage of Roku is very high, and it could be the case where just more people are getting into the market, and there is room for more than one winner. So the next step is really key, as Jenny says. So uh, I think that's what we're all going to be watching for over the next uh, few quarters as Apple rolls out. Yeah. All right, Jenny, you got another tweet for us. I do. Our next tweet is from Marty Chilberg, who says, Roku downgrade today may attract attention for investors looking to initiate position under $60. Disney investor presentation AH on April 11th, though, is a possible negative catalyst long both with covered calls on Roku position. So again, Disney has been a huge competitor. This is obviously another name in this space, but I mean, this downgrade could just be a temporary thing because obviously we could see this this resilience that they've really shown over the past couple of years. Okay, here's the next important question. Is Roku, and, and Landon, tell me this, is Roku too big to buy now? No. Can someone make their life easier by just buying Roku? No, I mean, you think about it, they don't create content like right. the other. They're, a delivery they're just an aggregator, right? right? So I, I, th I think no, but I think it's going to be not Disney Plus. I think it's going to be, because they'll probably partner with Disney exactly. on there, but it's going to be Apple. Right. I think that's going to be the key moving forward uh, about the uh, solvency of this particular product. But if I ever cut cable, guys, or, you know, Kevin, you especially, if I ever cut cable, I want an aggregator like Roku so mm -hmm. I can get those same yeah. channels. Right. And I, think I you, agree. And, uh, you Landon, gotta have it. Your data shows that reflects that too. It's like people don't want to fully cut the older people like myself because I, I'll lose channels, yeah. right? It's a it's a partial cut. People don't go straight away. They don't go cold turkey. Uh, you know, they 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 get away for a lot of the programming, but then, uh, like you said, for the sports and the, the local stuff, they want to be sure that they can get it. So they explore with both first and before they fully cut.